Hi there, it's Stephanie Robin with APNPI and today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the froggy pose or bunny pose as some people call it. Um, so the reason why I wanted to discuss this pose is that um, I think that there needs to be a little bit more awareness about the risks inherent with uh, performing the pose. And one of the things that I've learned in my training, both as a physiotherapist and through extensive interviews that I've done with other medical practitioners who work daily with newborns, um, is that it really is necessary to give the baby support in this pose and it should not be done hands off. So you should always be um, providing support through hands on the baby uh, and then compositing in Photoshop after the fact to remove those supporting hands. Um, so let's talk a little bit about where your hands should be placed for this pose. And I'm going to introduce for this uh, a, a sib, so a stand-in baby doll, um, and we'll be using this doll to demonstrate. All right, so here we are with the sib just on some pillows in my living room nothing fancy of course you would likely be doing this on a beanbag with proper um, posing pillows and whatnot uh, but just a quick demonstration for you here the one of the biggest issues that I see with this pose is that people are supporting in the first um, or second image by grasping the wrists here so they're simply pinching these wrists together and then leaving the head to balance on top of the hands here and one of the biggest issues with that is that the palms of the hands the undersides of the hands here are going to be pressing in and up under this space in under the jaw okay so if you follow your own jaw line around to your chin and then around the jaw again towards the back and then you press in that center portion you'll notice that it's actually soft in there um, and that's because that's a muscle that is your tongue underneath and so if you were to talk and press then your voice will actually change as you're pressing up into that area which you can hear as I'm doing it okay so what you want to do is avoid pressure into this area under the chin um, when you do put pressure here what will often happen is that you are lifting that tongue muscle upward inside of the mouth which can then occlude the airway which runs of course down into the lungs so that's why you're hearing this change in the voice because not as much air can push in and out when it's being occluded by that pressure underneath so that's one of the risks there um, that, that you have with all of this pressure when you're holding uh, from the wrists is that the full weight of the head is now pushing down into those hands and even if you have a hand nearby to catch if something was going to happen um, you could cause a neck strain from the baby quickly jerking one way or another um, in this pose and having to rebalance them and you can also um, cut off the airway underneath here so uh, first of all try not to position the hands too far underneath you want to rest them along the bony structure of the jaw here all right and rather than supporting by pinching underneath and allowing all the weight of the head into the hands I would encourage you to instead support through the jawline of the baby and the zygomatic bone which is the cheekbone so often we will you know position babies so that their head is slightly tilted towards the light source so light would be coming in from this side today we're flat lighting for the purpose of this video but um, usually you would be creating some kind of uh, lighting from from a side view so whichever way the lights coming in if it's here the top of the head is, is tilted slightly towards at this point you'll want to support with the cheekbone on the side that is tilted towards the light and then the jawline here okay and oftentimes when you're doing so you'll still be able to get a little bit of those fingertips to keep those hands in place um, as like so okay so this would be a safer way because now you can support the weight of the baby's head and lift it up and out of that hand cradle underneath so that you're not pushing down and causing any problems for the baby in terms of asphyxiation cutting off of that oxygenation or oxygen airflow okay and also you're staying on all of the bony structures here so one of the other issues when you do uh, clamp the wrists here um, and allow the weight of the head to fall into the hands is that generally newborns are really, really flexible. And so you'll see a lot of overextending here in the wrist. And when you notice a big bump out on that inside part of the wrist that doesn't look natural, um, it looks like an overly uh, bulbous 
wrist on that inside portion, you've gone way too far with the extension of the wrist, all right? So flexion this way, extension that way, you've pushed it too far and you're actually putting strain on the structures inside of the wrist, including the ligaments that are there. In an adult hand, you have bones that are fully formed within the wrist that create stops. And so your wrist cannot go further than a certain point because of those bones that are fully formed. But in babies, a lot of those bones are still in a collagen state, so they're very jello-y. Um, and so they're, they're quite small as well. The ossified part of the bone is really tiny. And so as you're bending, there's a lot more leeway to push that wrist quite a bit further than what should be comfortable for the baby. All right, so that's the first thing that I would suggest. Now, the second handhold that you're gonna want to work on would be um, to support the upper portion of the head here so that you can get this portion in the imagery for your composite. And when you are handholding for, for the head portion, um, we would, you know, suggest that you avoid certain soft areas like the fontanelle on top of the head as well as the, um, the in the temporal area. You're going to have your temples here on either side. So, you know, under these areas, especially in the fontanelle, what's directly underneath? The brain. So we don't want to put any pressure there. Um, that is that space is built in on newborn so that their head can squeeze and flex when they are going through the birth canal. But after they've been born, they don't need any more pressure or trauma in that area. And so it's recommended that you avoid putting pressure onto those soft areas of the head. So I typically recommend that you take sort of a glove position. One finger can rest lightly near the front here and the rest of the fingers would spread around the rest of the head and gently holding and you're gonna give a slight upward pressure just to keep again the weight out of those hands. All right, so you're gonna be slightly upward here. Um, you need to leave enough weight just so that the hands don't fall out, but there's barely any weight into those wrists in this position, all right? And then you'll remove your opposite hand. And for this one, I like to move a little bit more quickly in order to get that image for the composite and come back in and, and provide that support. Now, one thing that I would also caution against would be to use a wide angled lens such as a 35 and to have the camera in between yourself and the baby and to act as the support person and the photographer. I really do think it's a better idea that you have two hands available to come right in and support the baby very quickly um, and that your full attention is on the baby and their needs in this position and so um, trying to act both as photographer and uh, supporter for the baby um, is, is too much for you. You're going to have a camera in between yourself and the baby that needs to be then put down before this hand is free and also your focus, your mental focus is can be on, you know, where is my focal point? What's my aperture at? Is my exposure correct? Um, what's the composition looking like? You can be thinking about a whole lot of things other than is the baby safe in this position? Am I providing the safest possible um, posing for them here or support for them? And am I fully aware of their condition and whether or not they need additional support quickly and can I get there in time? So um, it is advisable that you use a support person, an assistant. Um, you can train parents to do this, of course. An assistant that you've worked with, uh, you know, and that knows how to come in and help in this instance is um, best. But in the, in the absence of, um, you know, the ability to hire an assistant or, or having one present, you can train a parent um, in order to provide this support. So again, the first hand-holding position would be jawline, cheekbone. So you're going to support on the cheek on the side that the head is tilting towards. All right. And you want to keep that head in the same position when you switch. And so then you would switch and you would provide support and a slight lift out of the hands here while avoiding fontanelle and temples. And you're just going to quickly grab that one and come back in to support the baby. One last note of which you'll want to be aware is that when you have baby in this position, now this is not anatomically correct because in the sib or stand-in baby, we have zero articulation through the spine. And so there's no curvature represented here. So there is a little bit more space than, than it looks like right here, but we do want to avoid this extreme extension of the neck. 
um, because when we do this, you can also pinch that airway, all right? So whether or not the baby is bringing the chin close to the chest or the head extended fully with the face pointing upward, or even if you come to either of the sides, you can then pinch that airway in, in, um, that the, uh, for the baby. So um, making it very difficult for them to breathe and um, bring a full breath in. And that of course is what's carrying the oxygen for them. So we do wanna avoid the extremes in positions. So avoiding extreme extension as well in the frog is advisable. All right, so a couple of last thoughts about this pose. Um, a lot of the time you'll hear, you know, uh, instructors who will say that it is safe to pose baby um, and balance them in the frog pose. And this goes for potato pose as well. Um, and sometimes I think that perhaps they may think that because babies have not fallen for them or to their knowledge, they've never um, introduced any injuries or risk to the baby. So. Um, I think that the issue with that is that a lot of the time the injuries that do result out of these poses and mishandling um, don't show up right away. So a strain in the baby's neck may not show up for a day or two and can cause that baby to avoid using the strained muscles or shortening that area, which can lead to torticollis, which is a shortening of one side of the neck with a lengthening and weakening of the other. Um, and that then can lead to plagiocephaly, which is a change in the structure of the skull, which actually leads to a flat spot on the head um, and can result in babies having to wear helmets up until a year of life and sometimes longer. Um, and so this is you know, something that we do want to avoid, but you can't always see that it's happened right at the session itself. Um, and also, you know, if you do end up cutting off the oxygen flow to the brain for a baby, even for a short period of time, um, it can lead to cell death in the brain. And so cells in the brain that aren't receiving oxygen can die off or atrophy. And the results of that are not gonna be immediately apparent either. So one of the telltale signs that you have some uh, deoxygenation happening is central cyanosis. And one of the biggest signs I would tell you to look for would be a blue tint to the lips or around that uh, mucal membrane area. So any purplish or blue tinting around the mouth or through the chest of a baby indicates central cyanosis. And this is a very dangerous condition for newborns. Um, and of course they should be looked at or seek medical attention if they um, are experiencing any uh, type of central cyanosis. Peripheral cyanosis, where your hands and feet may go a little bit you know, purple, um, that is more normal in a newborn and has to do with immature circulation. But certainly the, the lips and the inner lips, tongue, chest area should never be blue or purple in your newborns. So if you're noticing that happening, um, that's one indication that you really have to get the baby out of the position and, and, and advise that they should seek medical attention right away. Um, another telltale sign that you're at risk of cutting off the oxygen flow is that pouty pouty lip look and the outward tongue. So some babies do come in and naturally have that sticking out tongue throughout the session. Um, but if it's not something you've seen in other poses and now all of a sudden you're seeing very bulbous looking lips and that tongue kind of extruding a bit, um, often that can indicate that there's a lot of pressure underneath again. And so you're pushing up on that tongue, which causes it to then move forward and come out of the mouth. And so again, that's a situation where you wanna relieve that pressure underneath the jaw area and ensure that if you are gonna you know, progress with a pose like this um, or even chin on the wrists, that all of the pressure goes through the bony prominence of the jawline instead of underneath where all of that musculature sits. All right, um, so cell death in the brain can result in um, you know, brain injury. Um, the umbrella term for this is usually uh, cerebral palsy. Um, and can include, you know, decreased IQ or, you know, um, babies that aren't reaching their typical milestones for movement or speech or other intellectual um, things. So these aren't things you're going to see at your newborn session. These are outcomes that are going to be noticed throughout those first years of life and just not something that I would be willing to risk personally for my clients. Um, it can be a lifelong uh, thing to deal with. So these are reasons why I think it's very important that you take the care and the time to lend support to your newborns in these poses, specifically froggy and potato. Um, and I'd encourage you to share this information with others that you know in the industry uh, and work not just for what is safe, but what is safest.
Have a great day, everyone. I hope this has been helpful.